it's an unusual result. I mean, on Monday morning, for the first time since, let's say, two decades, we do not know who will run this country. Yeah. The SPD, or to be more fair, Olaf Scholz has won the election by a small margin. Uh, but as you've already alluded to, there are two likely coalitions, the Jamaica coalition or the traffic light coalition. There are two kingmakers. So it's a bit funny to say that the two parties, the Greens and the Liberal, very, very likely will make it into the government. It's unclear about the two larger parties, the CDU and the SPD. Um, what will it mean, though, for policy making going forward, like this Jamaica or traffic light coalition? I mean, three parties, it will be much more difficult to come to up with real reforms, right? I'm a bit relaxed when it comes to the question of a three-party coalition. I mean, many countries in Europe, the Netherlands or in Scandinavia, are pretty much used to it. So that is not my, my real concern. I think what you really need is a government that modernizes the country. We have lost competitiveness, let's say, at least in the last four years. Uh, it became pretty obvious that we need to become more digital. So there is, let's say, significant parts of the society that have voted for change especially the younger ones. And then I want to see a government that really moves forward this country after 16, let's say, extremely successful years of Chancellor Merkel, but that has clearly come to an end now. Which is remarkable, because you say 16 successful years, but this is a terrible result in reality for the CDU, CSU. Why has the German electorate moved away from this conservative bloc? It's for the first time that a, a chancellor is not running again, so there was no bonus of coming out of the chancellor's office. That is always a difficulty, so the, the race was relatively wide open. Mm. Uh, I think the Germans got the, the feeling in the last, especially one or two years under the pandemic times, that we are not leading in many areas that we think we do. Yeah? If you look at the school system, it's not digital at all. Uh, we need a sustainable old, old age pension system for public and private pensions, which is not there. We need a federal reform of our system between the lender and the central government, which we very likely will not get, but that's the mother of all reforms. We need a modern migration policy. We probably need 400,000 people coming into our labor market each year. So the sense was a bit, yes, she was a great crisis manager in the euro area crisis, in the migration crisis, in the pandemic. But where does this country move? Where do we earn our living from in the next years to come? The trouble with a, a three-party coalition beyond the two-party coalition is that you then have to get one more party to agree to a policy initiative. Have ultimately what the Germans voted for is this um, limbo that policies actually will be strangled at birth if they are not the least commonly acceptable outcome, i.e. there will be no strong policy initiatives in Germany under this next government because it will be so hard to get agreement from all the three parties. As I said, I tend to disagree with this statement. Mm. It's a new political system that is emerging. What I think is positive that the two extremes have been weakened and the center has been strengthened, but the center is more fragmented. <laughs> That's a bit the situation. So there are two kingmakers. The Greens are very much on climate change. The Liberals are very much on digitalization. So they could find a kind of pre-cooked agreement and then push a bit uh, the largest coalition partner forward. So you are fully right, it will be a bit different. In the last 16 years, we had a very strong chancellor and policy was made out of the Chancellor's office. This could change a bit. It moves maybe a bit back to the Parliament, uh, where then the two, let's say, smaller coalition partners are pushing the larger one for more reforms.